Hi, my name is Kelly Powers. I'm a guidance counselor here at Davis County High School. And this video is um, created for students who are going to be sophomores, juniors, or seniors next year for the 2021 school year. So if that is you or that is your student, then this video um, is meant to be helpful for you in the scheduling process. This is our guidance team um, that you see up on the screen. Again, my name's Kelly Powers, and you see letters outside each of our names. And that is just to show you who your guidance counselor will be. We are fortunate enough to, um, that the district is adding a new counselor. So we are in the process of um, getting a new counselor in our office. So you can see that for next year, um, the letters have been adjusted to divide through uh, four different counselors. So we're excited to be able to um, accommodate students more um, with more people in office. So I take care of students' last names A through D. E through J is Miss Tommy Jo Leisner. K through Q is Mr. Neil Hayden. And our new counselor will take care of students with the last name R through Z. And what I mean by that is those students, that is your counselor for personal counseling and scheduling each year. So um, we like to keep the same ones all four years. So um, that is the purpose of that, to build a relationship with that counselor. So those letters are just a reminder. All of you are mostly current students and already know us. There's going to be a few adjustments next year, um, again, as we shuffle in one new counselor. Also on the list, you see Megan Nicodemus. She is our Youth Service Center Coordinator and fills in the gaps with um, student needs in the guidance office quite often. Um, she helps with clothing or school supplies or basically just anything that might hinder a student from being successful. So. If you ever are in need of anything, then reach out to Miss Nicodemus. Also, we have Mr. Pippin's name up there. He is our CCR counselor, that's College and Career Readiness. He deals with all things dual credit and works very closely with Amanda Jerome. The last name on the list is our College and Career Readiness District Coordinator and also the director of our community campus programs. And down at the bottom, of course, uh, part of your guidance team is your own advocate teacher. Um, who you already know at this point. And that advocate is like a homeroom teacher that stays with you all four years and helps each year to meet you and help support you in the scheduling process. So some scheduling supplies that you receive from your advocate on Friday, March the 13th, before we were dismissed are your current transcripts. And that included the most recent nine week grades. Um, so if you had a nine week class, you should see those reflected on there as well. Graduation checklist and a four-year plan and that's a sheet that we share each year just kind of moving forward as you look at the list and check off the items of the classes that you've already taken and passed then you can see what's left to take and sort of plan out your time for uh, the remainder of your years at Davis County High School with us. Something that's important to note is you're going to see two different graduation checklists. We're working on um, two different years uh, here when I'm speaking to this group, if you are a sophomore next year for the 2021 group, your schedule, your uh, checklist, your graduation checklist looks very different or looks a little bit different than the current juniors and seniors. And that is because the state made some new requirements. And so we had to adjust those from the district level. So um, again, just make sure that you're looking at the correct graduation checklist according to your graduating class. This is the graduating uh, requirements for our current, for what would be next year's juniors and seniors. And if you just go by class of 2021 and 2022, these are your graduation requirements. So my hope is that you would take that transcript and if something happens that you've misplaced it, um, you don't have it, you weren't in advocates on Friday, uh, no need to worry. That is uh, posted in your Infinite Campus now and you can look at your transcript anytime. So now is a good time to pull that out, look at this sheet, check off the classes again that you've passed, and, and look ahead at what, what comes next for you. Um, these classes are mostly lined out in the order in which you would take them. So in math, for example, if you've completed Algebra 1 your freshman year, Geometry your sophomore year, then it is clear that the next step is Algebra 2. 
Um, also, just on that note in math, beyond Algebra 2, it's required that you take math all four years, but that is um, up to you what that looks like. Many of our students go on to pre-cal, um, some go on to calculus, some go into uh, taking college hours and taking like uh, technical math or college algebra, um, and other students do something um, like in the business world with business math or family consumer science, they do money skills for math. So the options are almost limitless beyond Algebra 2, but every student must have and pass Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 uh, prior to graduation. Um, also note on this one, again, the difference in the honors diploma, and this will be the same for all classes that I'm speaking to right now. The honors diploma um, still requires five AP classes um, of your choice, and on this you see um, the five boxes at the bottom. It doesn't matter which year you take them. Um, and then you need to take at least three of the five AP exams. In addition, you will need three years of the same foreign language. So that's French 1, French 2, and French 3. That is not Spanish 1, Spanish 2, and Latin 1. So you must have three consecutive years. Also, a note on foreign language on the other side, you see that it's foreign language is not required, but it's under college readiness. Oftentimes, a four-year university, and I get this phone call throughout every year. Students asking me, parents asking me about the foreign language. If your student is going directly from Davis County High School to the workforce or to the community college, it is likely a foreign language would not be required of them. However, we see UK, U of L, WKU, etc. Most of the larger four-year state schools want two years of the same foreign language and a lab science. So under the college prep diploma, you see that you have the option of earth-based chemistry or physics. You would want to lean towards chemistry or physics with a lab science. Um, if you are looking at a, your, your child or you're a student looking at this and hearing me talk, that you think you're going to go straight from Davis County High School to WKU to Murray, then you're going to want to hit the two uh, years of the same foreign language and the chemistry or physics rather than earth and space. However, if you are going to technical school, if you are going to the workforce or you join the military, earth and space is a fine option for that third year science. Um, it's also an elective in addition to if you're a student who loves math and science, of course take all the science you can. There are three year requirement, but you can of course take um, above and beyond any of these. These are the minimum requirements in each area. This is the diploma requirements, the Davis County Public Schools diploma requirements for next year's freshman and sophomore. So this is with the new state requirements. And you can see that you see the word personalized in this. So um, the state is just moving towards a more personalized approach. At Davis County High School, we uh, were fortunate that we were kind of already moving that way with English, with our 101, um, with our math options, with all the dual credit opportunities that we um, allow for. We were seeing a lot of this already, um, but now it's in place where you see three different diploma types. You see the career prep, the college prep, and the honors. And the honors is very similar to what I mentioned um, before for the other classes with the requirement being the same of three years of the same foreign language and a minimum of five AP courses completed in order to earn that. Um, where you start seeing the difference is the personalized um, at the career prep level, like if you look at English 1, English 2, and then it says personalized, personalized. So um, that may look different moving on, um, but for the sophomores that I'm speaking to right now, English 2 is your only option in that box. So unless you did not pass English 1 and you have to double up and take both of those. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, as you go throughout uh, the scheduling process. This is a good handout to have. Again, look at your transcript, read it line by line, and check the boxes as you have successfully completed each class, and then that will give you a big hint as to what is next. So um, integrated science would have been your freshman science, moving on to obviously biology the following year. This is your practice scheduler. Um, you can put in what you took the other years or um, more common is just for students to look at whatever year is next and then plan that out. If you are a going to be a junior next year, sometimes it is fun to see what is next, your junior year, and then what's left that you have to take, and then seeing how many uh, opportunities for electives you might have your senior year and start planning it out that way. Again, this is just a tool 
um, for you for planning purposes, but not anything that is required. It helps kind of get your mind wrapped around the different blocks that are full. So one quarter equals nine weeks. So if you had English one, first class, first block, then it's going to take up that first quarter and second quarter spot. Whereas if you had, uh, let's say painting, that's a nine week elective. So it just takes up one spot. English notes. Again, this is just kind of the progressive order and the options that you have within um, English. If you are a freshman, you will, well, regardless, whatever um, class you had this year, your English teacher will have recommended you for uh, something at the next level. So current freshmen are going to see English 2 CP, English 2 CP Excel, or possibly AP English language. Um, Sophomores are going to see, maybe you were in English 2, so you're going to see English 3, or uh, they may be in English, AP Lang, and now they're getting recommended for Lit. Um, there are a lot of options, so just take a close look at what your teacher who worked with you this year uh, recommends and thinks uh, would be appropriate for you next year. Ultimately, you and your parent will have the final say in that, but please take a, a careful consideration at what the, the teacher that worked with you this year thought might be best for you. Um, one note on this, many of our students are taking advantage of English 101 and 102. If that is your hope, then instead of requesting uh, English 3, 4, or Lang or Lit, you would put in college hours. And a note on that, college hours is in the uh, scheduling handbook that is available online at the school website. Of the, the available options are one through eight. And the idea is this, college hours one means you would have it first block, first semester. College hours four would be fourth block, first semester. College hours five would be a spring semester class, first block. College hours eight would be uh, fourth block, second semester. So hopefully that helps you and your student plan when you would ideally like to have your college classes. Um, students usually like them first and fourth seem to be the most popular. Some students prefer third and fourth back to back where they're in the building a half a day and then going on campus third and fourth. Um, some students can't fit it any other way so it's a second block class and they do it online and um, that works well too. So again, all dual credit classes that you plan to take at the college, including 101 and 102, would be requested simply by putting in college hours 1 through 8, depending on how many classes you would like to request. So for example, if I am a senior next year and I want to take public speaking as an elective, English 102 as my senior English class, um, and let's say government, then I would choose three different college hours. So that might be college hours one, four, and five. Um, just depends on where you want the layout of that to be in your schedule. And please take um, note of the requirements that are, that are expected of you in those classes. So you do have to have a certain ACT score. At this point, I know that we don't have all ACT scores in uh, from the junior test or even the sophomore test. So um, just your best guess, if you think that you're going to meet the criteria for those, go ahead and put those in. Math notes, um, as sophomores and beyond, it's likely you were in geometry um, or Algebra 2. If you're in geometry, you'll be recommended for Algebra 2. And again, Algebra 2 would be pre-cal and beyond. So again, it's important just to review what your math teacher recommended for you for next year. Um, science, you took likely integrated science or AP environmental science. Um, as sophomores, you were likely in biology. You can choose chemistry or physics or earth and space for your junior and or senior year. So that's up to you. Three science credits are required. Um, something to note, if you are an upperclassman and you are still trying to decide and work towards your honors diploma, you can uh, still suggest or select the AP environmental science as a um, request for, for next year as well. Social studies, um, this is just kind of the progression um, that social studies has been. Our current, uh, our rising uh, sophomores took either world history or AP human geography. They'll be moving into US history and then government and econ. Um, the 
juniors and seniors went intro to social studies or AP human geography, Western Civ, U.S. history, and then you all will be taking probably government and econ moving forward. So just look at the progression of this and um, and again, your social studies teacher will have recommended the appropriate course for next year. Special considerations, of course, band is an all-year program. Choir and orchestra are all-year programs. All three of those programs take care of that performing arts elective that you see on the graduation checklist. So if any time during your high school career you complete one year in either of those three programs, you can check off uh, the performing arts uh, credit. Also, BAN takes care of the Fit for Life PE credit. So if that's you, you do not have to take that. Um, community Campus, let's see, the Life Science Academy takes care of Fit for Life Health. So um, those are classes that you don't have to take because that curriculum is covered within um, the course of, of that year. And let's see, oh, ROTC, my face is kind of covering part of that, but that's what that last thing bullet says under Arts and Humanities. ROTC is also a year-long program that takes care of Fit for Life Health and PE. So it is not necessary for you to take those courses if you've had, um, if you have completed one year of ROTC. Honors Diploma, I already mentioned that. Again, five AP classes minimum and three years of the same foreign language. Um, each year at Davis County, we are proud uh, that we have been able to offer 20 or more AP courses. Um, the AP exams are held in May each year. And through those courses, students who are successful with a three, four, or five earned college credit. Academic internship is something that um, juniors and seniors may request where they job shadow, explore careers. Um, they get real world uh, work and shadow experience. So if you, it's great for a student who knows what they want to be and it's great for students who do not know what they want to be to explore some different careers. So think about that. That has typically been fourth block. Um, so it's an opportunity for students to go out and job shadow and take a real live look at um, a career they might be interested in. Co-op, there are two different avenues to um, achieve co-op, junior and or senior year. For the business co-op, you would select that and it's fourth block. And if you want it all year, then you select the fall and spring term. And then you're also going to be required to take business management. If you're a senior listening to this and you were in business co-op last year and you already took the course, then you will not need to retake business management. Um, ag co-op, each year that you take ag co-op, you need at least one ag class within the year. So be sure if that is something on your radar and you plan to work, that you um, request the appropriate classes that line up with the co-op opportunity. CTE pathways, look for these pathways in the scheduling handbook. Know the benefits for achieving CTE certification. Um, our teachers are excited to talk to you about the opportunities within their departments. Um, that would be agriculture, business, and family and consumer science, and those are all outlined in great detail online on the scheduling handbook. Also, um, you will see a video in the near future from Ms. Jerome and uh, Mr. Pippin as well talking about community campus and the Early College Academy. And the Early College Academy is what many people are interested in um, at this point, talking about getting your associate's degree before you graduate. Those applications were due last Friday, so the deadline has passed on that. Um, and we know that you don't know um, your ACT score yet, likely if you are a sophomore, um, but we are just going to assume that uh, if you uh, if you filled out your application and you took the ACT, you can go ahead and schedule as such. So if that is you and you you did complete the um, application, you will have received an email already at this point from Mr. Rome about this. But you would want to go ahead and schedule college hours one through eight because ideally, if you're accepted into the program, you will be off campus on OCTC's campus available for college hours all day, your junior year and your senior year. So at this point, you would, you would, suggest, you would request college hours one through eight. Um, community campus, you can look at the course codes for that. If you're engineering or LSA, those programs are um, outlined in there as well as the course code that you need for the fall and the spring term. Um, I think that it designates AM or PM. If not, that's an adjustment that we can make um, later. Just be in communication with Mr. Rome on that, please. 
Owensboro Community and Technical College also requires a benchmark. Um, back to the early college application, um, the benchmarks for that were 18, 19, 20, an 18 in English, a 19 in math, and a 20 in reading. So those are the benchmark requirements. If you know your ACT score already and you did not meet those, then you're going to want to go ahead and request Davis County High School courses. The college will hold us to these standards um, in order to enroll you in these courses. Um, However, if you are planning on taking some community campus or sorry, community college hours, then you will need to be on the lookout for a Google form from Mr. Trey Pippen. And on that, um, you will complete that application and then you too can request college hours one through eight according to how many spots you have available or how many classes you desire to take um, next year at the community college. Technical programs um, require an ACT composite score of 16 as a minimum. You're going to hear Mr. Pippin talk more and more about being transition ready and the two different buckets um, that are required for you to meet in order to graduate. Um, and like I said, more details to come on these two um, opportunities. College considerations. Students and parents, for a minute, just think about some of these things before you jump to the idea that uh, your student is ready. It's best to reflect and think about um, how college and taking college classes in high school is different than just the standard high school. Some things to consider. Fall break, spring break, and snow days. We have no guarantee that these are the same and most likely they will be different. So that can change plans for your junior or senior. When you're talking about a family who maybe there's younger siblings um, in the elementary or middle school and um, not on the college schedule. So the fall break and spring break typically fall differently and snow days typically don't happen in the college life. So um, it may be that Davis County Public Schools are on a delay or out for snow and um, OCT say may still require your student to come to class. Um, transition and transportation considerations. Think about what time of the day you're signing up for classes. Does this require transportation? The student would need to, to get to the college. There are many online offerings as well. That might be something for you to consider as well. Um, grades, progress reports, grades and in infinite campus in high school classes. As a parent, we can check on those anytime. Um, as a parent, who has a student in college classes, we do not have the opportunity to check grades. There are not progress reports. And unfortunately, when the grades come, it's already too late to make adjustments if needed. Um, and that college transcript stays, stays forever. So when they go from Davis County High School with an OCTC transcript to say Murray State, that follows with them. And so it's important to make sure that um, your student is mature and responsible enough and has the work ethic to, to do college level work and uh, be trusted with that because there's not a lot of um, ability to view grades along the way. Also, uh, transfer credits. It's important for you to see what your student's taking and to know where they're heading and how that might transfer. There is opportunity on different college websites for you to see how they transfer. There's not universal ideas uh, of like this always counts for this at a certain college. One may count as an English credit and at the next college in the same state um, it may count as a humanities credit. So it's your responsibility to follow up on that and oftentimes we don't know where our kids going to school what they're going to major in so we make our best guesses and I can say that Mr. Pippin has worked on a document to minimize um, kind of these oops type moments where your student has taken a class that doesn't count for anything so we have uh, created a list of classes that are most likely to be beneficial as a gen ed requirement at state schools here. Um, also consider uh, what it means when a student drops a class with a W. They will be on a college campus and hear their teachers and professors say things like, well, you have until this date to drop with a W. If that is your student's class and you drop with a W, while you might avoid a poor grade on a college transcript, the high school will reflect an F for that. An F. So think about that for a minute. Um, it, when we get the grades at Christmas, if your student uh, says English 101 W, they get an F for, on their high school transcript. So um, it's just important that you 
you, you uh, think about these and have just some honest conversation with your student as to what they're ready for um, and how they might be most successful. We have found that the live classes um, tend to be a better way to start your kid into the dual credit process versus the online just because being in class makes it um, makes for a more successful setting most of the time. So um, just choose wisely as you go through these um, different considerations. This is a document that just shows uh, the difference in advanced placement versus dual credit courses. As a guidance counselor, I'm often asked by parents, which is better? And, and there's not really uh, an answer that either are better, but you can see kind of the how different things, how they are different ways to obtain college credit. So take a minute to look through these. Um, AP classes are taught in the school. You can see their grades. Um, the teachers have special training. There is um, no cost for the course, but at the end of the year, there is a test taking fee and they have to score a three, four, or five to earn the college credit. Or, and then on the other side, dual credit courses are typically not in the school. They are, um, they, the student has to pay tuition for them. And, however, if they pass the course, students earn credit at the affiliated college. So um, it's just important to consider um, the differences here. And I just wanted to make sure that people understand both. And many of our students find success in both. And many of our students do a blending of the two programs. And that is perfectly acceptable. So you don't have to do all of one or all of the other. It's okay to do a little of both if you like. Um, at this point, this concludes the what would have been a parent meeting um, in our auditorium. I hope that you found this information helpful. Again, more video links will be coming soon to talk about how to actually input your request. Um, I believe Ms. Jerome and Mr. Pippin are working on a video with some details about the dual credit in early college and uh, more with that. If you have any further questions, uh, please reach out to your advocate teacher. And if they aren't able to assist, reach out to your guidance counselor, please. And thank you for your time and attention today.